Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I have been teaching the Word of God for 35 years. Five years just in home Bible studies. Five years working in a, a church in St. Louis, and now close to 25 years in the ministry the way that it is now. And in all the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of meetings that I have done, I've only had to miss two. One a whole meeting and one, one session of a meeting because of sickness. The entire rest of those 35 years, God has kept me. Do you know how amazing that is? How unbelievably amazing that is? And we need to celebrate things like that, that God keeps us. One woman shared with me one time, she said, You know, you've got such a powerful testimony, and so many of my friends have such powerful testimonies. And she said, you know, I really haven't, I haven't had anything majorly awful happen in my life that I've had to overcome. And so she said, I was talking to God one day, and I said, I don't have a, I don't have a testimony. He said, your testimony is I kept you. See, we need to just celebrate the keeping power of God in our lives. I wonder how many car wrecks we could have that we don't have because we've got angels with us and God keeps us. Is anybody feeling your spirits lift tonight? Is anybody feeling some of those burdens that maybe you walked in with begin to lift off your shoulders? Remember, I just feel like I need to go back to the beginning for a minute. Do your responsibility, cast your care. Don't walk out of here and start caring about that problem again. If you can do something about it, go do it. If you can't, then give it to God. And in the meantime, show that you trust Him by going ahead and being bold enough to enjoy your life. The feast of Passover came next, and it showed thanksgiving to God for the beginning of wheat harvest. The feast of trumpets was next, a one-day feast expressing just joy and thanksgiving to God. The day of atonement was a big day, the day when sin was removed from the people and the nation was restored to fellowship with God. That'd be worth setting a day aside, wouldn't it, every year? Man, I'm going to celebrate today because my sins have all been forgiven. Wow, I don't have to pay. Jesus paid. The Feast of Tabernacles was another seven-day feast, and it was a celebration of God's protection and guidance. I love it. I think maybe we, we miss something by not looking at these things more. And you know why? You know why we don't have to do this now as commandments? Because they had, and I've, I counted like um, eight commanded celebrations, and then they also celebrated every time that there was a victory, like when, when Nehemiah finished the, building the wall, they celebrated. When Esther got the victory and wicked Haman was hung, they celebrated. Every time that they would make progress or something, they would build a little altar and they would worship and celebrate there. And so they always celebrated their victories. And I don't think we take the time to do that. I don't think we really take the time that we should to celebrate our victories. Even, even if it's nothing other than, you know, like I said, going and getting a cup of coffee with a friend. We need to take the time to think about, I've accomplished something and I'm going to take the time to celebrate it. So God commanded all these celebrations, but I think what they had by commandment, we now have by grace, and if they could do it this often by commandment, I think we ought to be living with an attitude of celebration all the time in our lives. Amen? Amen. Well, I can't help it, Joyce. I'm just one of those deeper people. I just don't feel very happy, you know? I got a book for that called Living Beyond Your Feelings. You can go out and get a copy tonight. Amen. Yes, they went from party to party. <laughs> God likes a party. How about if you thought about every morning when you get up, oh, great, another party. 
And you know, for me to be able to come to this point in my life is quite amazing because I was one of those very deep people. Don't make any noise, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I was usually thinking about how to solve my problems. And I always had the weight of the world on my shoulders. Had to be responsible for everything. Everybody looked to me for everything. I'm just telling you the truth. You can learn to enjoy your journey. Don't be so frustrated about when you're going to reach your destination that you never enjoy the journey. The journeys in life take a lot longer than that little bit of time when you reach a destination. And I've got news for you. When you reach the destination you're headed for now, you'll rest there a short period of time and you'll head off for something else in your life because God has created us to be goal-oriented. We're always heading toward something. We're reaching, we're stretching, we're growing. So if we can't enjoy the going toward it, they're only going to have a few moments of joy in our whole life. Amen? Amen? So learn how to celebrate. Let's learn how to celebrate victories, large and small. How about birthdays? Oh, no, you don't, don't mess with that. It's just, I'm just another year older. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't care about my birthday. It's not a problem. Well, shame on you. <laughs> you know what? You're more than just another year older. Let me ask you a question. If we celebrate and have a party for a one-year-old, which everybody always gives their children a party on their first birthday. Everybody does it. And all the relatives have to come. And then they usually get a party on their second birthday, and then their third birthday, and on and on. Well, if we're going to throw a big party for a one-year-old, what kind of a party should we have by the time we're 50, or 60, or 30, or 40? Wow! I mean, think about that. Why would we celebrate somebody having made it through one year? Come on! Why would we celebrate Somebody have, oh, wow, let's celebrate. You are one year old. <laughs> well, next year on June the 4th, I am going to be 70, and honey, I am having a party. And it's not going to be a one-day party. It's going to be a week-long party. I mean, we're partying. In a year, your heart beats approximately 38 million times. 38 million heartbeats. Pumping blood 525,600 times through your 24,000 to 48,000 miles, depending on your body size, miles of blood vessels. <laughs> it takes a lot of miraculous power to keep us up and running and doing all the things that we do. And we need to not have this attitude, oh, no, I'm fine. I don't need that. <laughs> no, you're not fine. And you do need that. And because we don't take time to do these things, that's why we get bitter attitudes and we get burnout and we sit around and feel sorry for ourselves and we resent other people that are enjoying their lives when really we need to make a decision that we are going to celebrate ours. Amen? Well, nobody gave me a party, not even with a skinny goat. Well, give yourself a party. Just give yourself a party. Honestly, we do need to lose that attitude. Oh, no, no. No, it's okay. I can do without that. No, that would be extravagant. Well, can I tell you something? You are worthy of a little bit of extravagance every once in a while. Everything you get and everything somebody does for you doesn't have to be something that you desperately need. Matthew 26, verse 6. Now, when Jesus came back to Bethany and he was in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very precious, and I can add very expensive 
perfume. I forget now what they said. It was like would have been the cost of like a month's wages or something. It was very, very rare and expensive perfume. And she poured it on Jesus' head <laughs> as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant. You know what indignant is? <laughs> Saying, well, for what purpose is all this waste? What a waste. Just take that expensive perfume and just pour it all over his head. This could have been sold for a large sum of money, and the money could have been given to the poor. That sounds very spiritual. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get so stinking religious, we can't enjoy nothing. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but Jesus said, fully aware of this, he said to them, why do you bother the woman? She's done a noble, praiseworthy, and a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor among you, but you're not always going to have me. Now watch this. In pouring this perfume on my body, she has done something to prepare me for my burial. Now, here's what I like to say about this scripture. This extravagant act of love and sacrifice that this woman poured upon Jesus, which really it wasn't about the perfume. It was about her willingness to sacrifice. It was about her willingness to give up something that cost her. I know what it was. What I read said that that bottle of perfume was worth a year's wages. A year's wages. So she was willing to give up a year's worth of wages, and it, it appeared to be an extreme waste, but Jesus was getting ready to come in to the most difficult time that he had while he was here on earth, and that was going to the Garden of Gethsemane and preparing mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for his upcoming death and crucifixion. And he said, what she has done has prepared me for my burial. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? Because that act of extravagant love, the joy that he felt from her sacrifice of what she did for him prepared him for the next difficult time that was coming up in his life. Come on, give God a praise. Let me have the problem. Now, as I said, we were, at a, we were at a gathering last night with some people, and um, one of the men said to me, he said, I was in the shower, and I was thinking, what can I get Joyce? I'd like to buy Joyce a gift. And he said, God said, don't get her anything, get Dave something. <laughs> well, I'm still kind of talking to God about that. I don't quite... Haven't quite got that figured out yet, but I'm trying to be real happy for Dave. But no, I am happy for Dave. But anyway, he said, and then I felt like God wanted me to get Dave a putter, but I didn't know he paid, played golf. And I thought, how could anybody not know that Dave plays golf? So anyway, here's my point. The last thing in the world my husband needs is another putter. But this man, directed by God, bought Dave not only a putter, but I mean a very nice putter. And I don't know that much about it, but Dave tells me it's expensive. Well, you should have seen Dave last night. I mean, he opened this thing up. He's tearing the box up. He gets this out. He's shown me the jewels in the bottom of this three times. You, you see those? I mean, they're not real jewels, but he said, you, you see that? And then he got those in there, and he's telling me what kind it is and what it probably costs. And even when I wanted to bring it over here tonight and use it as an example, he said, no, I don't want you to take the plastic off the handle because I don't want you to, to get it dirty. And he said, be, be sure that you, you keep this on it and, you know, be careful with it. So here's my point. Dave didn't need this putter. It was extravagant, but it blessed him so much, and he got so excited about it and I don't know what may come up in Dave's life or what may, may have been maybe bothering him or something, but God wants to come into our lives and he wants to do some extravagant things for us to, to help balance out all the other disappointments in life. And you know what? 
Not only does God want to do these things for us, but I want you to listen to me. God works through people. And that blessing came to Dave through a person who was willing to listen to God. That extravagant gift got poured out on Jesus because a woman was willing to listen to God. And not only do people, not only do we need a little bit of extravagance in our life once in a while. You know, it's great to get something you desperately need. But it's got a little different edge to it when you get something that you know you really wouldn't have to have, but God gave it to you just as a love gift. Just to pour it on extra double special. Amen? And uh, we need to be more open to letting God use us to, to sometimes pour out blessings on people. You know, I think sometimes, I mean, some people aren't even willing to give to the poor, but then you do have a certain group of people that will help the poor. We're all moved by people that are desperately needy. But you know, then sometimes if somebody's not real needy, or maybe we think, well, why should I give that to them? They got more than I do. Well, you know, it, it's really not, many times it's not even about the gift. It's about what it says to the person. It's about people knowing that they're valued and that somebody cares about them. And I think that we need to be willing to use more of our stuff and more of our things and more of our finances just to be radical blessings to people. And you don't have to worry. If you're a radical blessing to somebody else, God is always going to touch somebody to bring radical blessings back into your life. You absolutely cannot outgive God. Amen? <laughs> I like this message tonight. And don't you be a party pooper either. Well. Don't be indignant. That's what it means to be indignant. I think that's a waste another new outfit. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> People ask me sometimes what I like and, you know, I, or what my hobbies are. And, you know, I work so hard in my life and really, not to my credit, I was out of balance and overboard and, and ended up getting burnout. That's why I try to teach people to take care of themselves now, but at least my heart was right. I was trying to do what I thought I should be doing. I was just doing it a little out of balance. And, and I worked so hard, I never really got around to even knowing what I like to do. And so I've been in the process of trying to figure that out for the last few years. And, and uh, somebody asked me yesterday what my hobbies were, and I said, I'm still trying to figure that out. But... <laughs> But one of the things that I have decided that I love is, is beauty. I love beautiful things, just scenery and, and just beautiful things, beautiful furniture, beautiful material. You know, this building is beautiful. I love this. I think it just helps my anointing to preach in here. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and... Uh, uh, so, so I like pretty things. And you know what? I don't apologize for that. I like pretty clothes. And I've probably got more than I need, but I give away a lot of clothes. And th that's okay. I work hard. And, you know, God wants you to have some things that you like. Quit thinking that you always, oh, I can do without that. I can do without. I'm not suggesting living extravagantly and way beyond your means and getting stuff you can't pay for and being selfish and self-centered. I'm talking about those little extra things that we need just here and there in life. Just that little touch that just adds that little <sighs> to our life. I mean, I don't understand getting that excited about a putter, but Dave got it. I mean, he... That'll, that'll be like his new baby. I tell you, nobody will touch that putter. My gosh. He'll be showing that to everybody. Wait till he gets with the golfers. Oh, look at this putter that I got. He says, you got a spirit of exaggeration on you. Listen, anything that happens in my family, I get it in a message within 24 hours. 
He just got the putter less than 24 hours ago. And they saw me walking out with it tonight and said, where are you going with that? Dave said, oh, she's got it in a message already. <laughs> you know what? I bet, Dave, I bet that God gave you that putter just so I could preach better tonight. <laughs> Come on, let's give God praise. It was my gift after all. <laughs> yes. All right. Focus on what you do right and not what you do wrong. How many of you moms sometimes wonder if you're a good mother? Have I even got a few here maybe who have just really, that's been a real issue for you, you know, am I a good mother? Okay, I'm going to read you something. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, guys, you're just going to have to give me a few minutes here to... We love you too, but I got a few. I got to talk to the ladies. Women are amazing. I mean, honestly and truly, wow. Adam didn't know what he was getting when he got Eve. Well, maybe he did. You know, he was a man and he didn't know what else to call her, so he just looked at her and said, Whoa, man. And that's how we got woman. <laughs> Mom and dad were watching TV. By the way, this is from out of my book, The Confident Woman, which you can get. And if you're a guy, you can just put tape over the woe. <laughs> Same message will work for you. Anyway. Mom and dad were watching TV when mom said, I'm tired and it's getting late and I think I'll go to bed. She got up, went to the kitchen to make sandwiches for the next day's lunches, rinsed out the dessert bowls, took meat out of the freezer for supper, the follow for supper the following evening, checked the cereal box levers, filled the sugar container, put spoons in the bowls, put bowls on the table, started the coffee pot for brewing the next morning, put some wet clothes in the dryer, put a load of clothes in the washer, ironed a shirt, sewed on several loose buttons, picked up the game pieces left on the table, put the telephone book back in the drawer. She watered the plants, emptied a wastebasket, hung up a towel to dry. She yawned and stretched and headed for the bedroom. She stopped by the desk, wrote a note to the teacher, counted out some cash for a school outing, pulled out a textbook from under the chair, signed a birthday card for a friend, addressed and stamped the envelope, wrote a quick list for the supermarket the next day. She went and put both of those in her purse. Mom then creamed her face, put on moisturizer, brushed and flossed her teeth, trimmed her nails. Hubby called, I thought you were going to bed. I'm on my way, she said. <laughs> she, <laughs> she put some water into the dog's pole, put the cat outside, made sure the doors were locked, took, looked in on each one of the children, turned on a bedside lamp, hung up a shirt, threw some dirty socks in the laundry basket, had a brief conversation with the one child still doing homework. In her own room, she set the alarm, laid out clothing for the next day, straightened up the shoe rack, added three things to her to-do to list for the next day. About that time, the husband turned off the TV and announced to no one in particular, I'm going to bed, and he did. <laughs> Let me tell you something, women, you rock. I am telling you what, the details that women take care of and keep up with to run a house, you men, you have no idea what God has given you. You just don't have the slightest idea. I'm going to bed. And he got up and he did. And that's true. Women take care of all that stuff. All those little tiny details that nobody even pays any attention to. So let me tell you, you never ever have to wonder if you're a good mother. You never have to wonder if you're a good wife. You need to start celebrating all the things that you do because you are amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. Come on, let's give the, the mothers in here a big hand. Our God is an awesome God, amen?
So I want you to start celebrating what you do. You know what? You're not built for guilt. <laughs> Actually, it's been proven. They tell me scientifically, the experts wrote this, that when we feel guilty, there are hormones released in our bodies that actually tend toward disease and emotional problems. We are not built for guilt. You don't want to have a haughty, I'm better than everybody else attitude. But neither do you need to go around thinking about everything that's wrong with you all the time. You are an awesome person. And I mean that. You're an awesome person. And don't you let anybody else ever make you feel bad about yourself because you're not what they think you should be. What you need to do is be a God pleaser, not a people pleaser. Amen? You know, each one of us can find something to be upset about if we choose to. But God wants us to focus on the things that are going right. He wants us to start celebrating victories. And I believe that you want that too.